Yo what's going on guys Tanmay for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial and operations research especially the network analysis network diagram port and cpm part so in the previous couple of videos we've understood what is network analysis we've seen what is network diagram in fact right in the previous video we saw network diagram what exactly is a network diagram we saw all the terms we saw all the mistakes that we make so if you have missed that video and if you don't know what a network diagram is you definitely should check that video out in this video what we are going to be doing is we are going to be solving three different numericals based on network diagram so it's completely numericals no theory and we'll see three different types and different formats in which this question can be asked of network diagrams so with that being said let's start off with our first numerical okay so as you can see on the screen we have been given a question generate the network diagram for the following data we've been given the activities and the predecessor activities so i hope you know what is activities and predecessor activities in general what is happening is for a and b to start that is for the activity a and b there is no predecessor activity which means that a and b can immediately start off but you can see for c a and b should be completed only then c activity can start so to visualize this in a network diagram let's start off let's start off with this node so let's say this is a starting point so we'll resemble activity with a yellow arrow so we'll start off a and we'll start off b so this is a and this is b so that's how you draw a network diagram so these are the nodes or events you can say so this is node or event and these yellow arrows as i mentioned are the activities okay now you can see that to start c that is this activity you need a and b together so when you start off a and b simultaneously or parallelly you reach two different events or two different nodes right but what c is required is it requires a and b together but now we cannot connect a and b to one single node directly so you cannot do this or something like this okay you cannot say a and b goes to one single event so this is not allowed in network diagram basically what i'm trying to say is in a network diagram you cannot have the start event and end event for two activities as same okay simultaneously this is not allowed so this is where a concept of dummy activity comes into picture so what we can do is we can create a dummy activity from b and it is denoted by dotted lines so i'm drawing dotted orange lines so this dummy activity does not consume any resources or time it is just to resemble that a and b meet at a single event because our requirement for c that is if you want to start activity c you have to complete a and b together but right now you can see that a is resulting into a new event and b is resulting into a different event and they two cannot come at one single point because they are starting from one single node right so that is not allowed in network diagram so that's why we need a dummy activity compulsorily so in general we have to avoid using dummy activities and only use it when it is compulsory or there is no other option and right now this is exactly a situation where we don't have any other option so i hope you are getting that why we created this dummy activity you don't have to name this anything but this denotes that a and b meet at this event so now i can start c from over here so i can say c can start off and this will make it reach a new event okay let's move on to the next activity that is d so for d also again a and b is required which means i can start from over here only so multiple activities can start off from one node or one event but multiple activities starting from one node cannot go to another node directly so that's why dummy activity was required so i cannot do something like this and point to this node directly because there is already one activity going to this event from that same node okay so let's call these blue circles nodes and not events they can either be called node or events but let's call this nodes from now anyways so d will result into a different node so let's draw d so i'm going to name this d and both c and d required a and b to happen first so that's why they started off from this node i hope you're getting till now now moving on to e for e to happen b is required so when b activity happened we reach this node so we can start off e from over here so this is e and this makes a new node or new event but now if you observe when we move on to the next activity that is f f requires d and e together now when we perform d we reach this node when we perform e we reach this node but these two nodes are at different locations they have to be together if you want f to happen so what we can do in this case is we don't need any dummy activity to connect them because both of them are starting from different different nodes so we can club them together at one single node and what i'm going to do is i'm going to erase this again and start e from over here and connect it to this node itself so now you can see d and e come to this node so this is where we did not need a dummy because 
both these activities were starting from two different nodes over here we needed dummy because both these a and b were starting from the same node and we cannot connect them to one single node directly okay so that's why we needed a dummy and now that d and e has combined to this node we can start off f so i'm gonna say f over here and this is f resulting into a different node but again as we move ahead from f to g so we've done all these things right now but as we move to g you can see that g requires c and f together now when we do c we reach this node when we do f we reach this node but we want these two things together so instead of doing them separately i will erase this off and connect f to this node itself and name it as f so now c and f result in this event or this node so now i can easily start off g right so g can happen after this so this is done so moving ahead h requires d and e together where did d and e meet at this node so first let me just draw a node over here and yeah coming back to d and e d and e meet this point for h we need d and e so i'm going to see h resulting in another node and lastly you can see i requires g and h so g resulted in this node and h resulted in this node but we want them together for i to happen so instead of creating separate nodes i will create one single node i will just connect one to other and you can connect this to this or the other way around so both things are okay so i'm gonna say this is h so g and h combine at this node and now i can happen so i is the last activity so i'm gonna name it i and create our last event or node okay so this was our first network diagram i hope you got the idea about the dummy activity this was the only thing that was unique to this one rest all we've already solved in the previous video tutorial also so the idea must be very clear let's move on to the next type of network diagram question okay so we've been given some data so construct the network for a project in which activities have the following precedence now here you can see we don't have a proper table okay so what they've given is a c and d can start immediately which means a c and d do not have any predecessor activities they can easily start off from one single node that is the starting node now the second thing they're saying is e is greater than b and c so what this greater than sign means is e cannot start before b and c okay so b and c are required for e which means b and c are predecessors of e the third point says f and g are greater than d which means f or g cannot start before d is completed now these all these letters are activities okay so these expressions are little bit confusing so what i would recommend is you need to convert them into our tabular format for better understanding that is the same table that we saw in the first question that is activities and predecessors and i find that easy it is not compulsory you can directly start off drawing network diagram if you understand these greater than equal to and less than equal to signs basically when e is greater than b and c it means that e cannot start until b and c is done okay so b and c are predecessors of e but sometimes this gets confusing so i always draw this table so let me just show you that table and then we'll try to understand this so yeah this is that table i have written all the activities that we have a to k and a does not have any predecessor because a c and d can start immediately so that's why a c and d have no predecessor b cannot start before a so that's the seven point over here b is greater than a which means a has to happen before b starts so that's why b has a predecessor of a similarly all these greater than equal to signs are converted into their necessary predecessors you can go through them and compare the table i'm not going to waste time in that let's start off with the network diagram so this is some other type of question wherein the table is not directly given we've been given some expressions and from that you should draw the table i would recommend that you draw it because otherwise you will get confused so starting off with our network diagram we'll draw the first node and we know that a c and d can start immediately right so i'm going to say this is a this is c and this is d this will result in three different events or nodes now you can see that b requires a to happen so after activity a has happened you can draw b so i'm just going to directly draw b over here we already have done a we've done b we've done c and d so e requires b and c to happen so after activity b we reach this node after activity c we reach this node but for e we require both of them together which means we have to combine them so instead of drawing this separately i will combine b with this and now since b and c are combined at this node i can easily start off with e 
By the way, when you are drawing network diagram for the first time, I would recommend that you always use pencil because these kind of corrections are always going to happen. So it's always better to use pencil. Now for the next two activities, F and G, D is required. So this is going to be F, this is going to be G, resulting in different events. You don't have to number these events. That would add more confusion only. It's not compulsory. So F and G is done. So for H and I, you can see E and F requires to be combined. So E results in this node, F results in this node. So instead of F going over here, why not just connect F to this event directly? Name it F and H and I can easily start off now because E and F come over here. So starting off with H and I resulting in two different nodes. For J, you can see that I and G needs to be connected. So instead of having G separately over here, why not connect this G to I directly, right? So I and G combined reach this node. So now J can also start. So I'm going to say J, draw a new node. And for K, H is required. H is over here. After H, we reach this node. So once H is done, we can start off K from over here. So this is K and this will create a new node. So we've reached our final answer, but you can see that we have two different nodes which are not connected together and we want to reach one single node in the end. So instead of having two separate things, you can connect them off even though they are not required to be connected because there is no event starting from over here or there is no event that requires KNG to come at one single node. But then when you have two different nodes at the end, you can easily connect them off and that's what conventionally is done. So that also was a correct answer, but this is the convention that is being followed. So yeah, we are done with this network diagram also and this is how your network diagram should look like. So this is question number two. Let's see question number three, which is another different type of network diagram, wherein the question is slightly different. Okay, so as you can see, draw a network diagram for the following project and in this question, you can see the dependency criteria is given in plain English. So we don't have a table, but we've been given all the different conditions. So you can see A is the start event and K is the end event. So here we have names for the event also that is we have something like this and we have something like this. Okay, so A is the start event, K is the end event. This is what is given. Then we have A precedes event B. So for B to happen, A is required because A is the start event, right? Then we have J is the successor to F. C and D are successors to event B. So again, reading all this will take up time. Let's see a table. You don't actually have to have a table, but as I mentioned, it is better to have a table so that you can easily understand the relationships between the different events and different activities. Okay, so I have drawn the activity and predecessor activity table, but these are actually not activities. So these are events, okay? So activity is that yellow arrow and events is that circle, right? So even this is predecessor events only. So let's start off with creating this network diagram now. So first event, as I mentioned, is A. That's what is given in point number one. So I'm going to draw A. I'm going to name it A because We've been given names of the events and not the activities over here. Then we have event B, which is preceded by A. So that's point number two, right? So A to then B. Then we have C, which is preceded by B. And we also have D, which is preceded by B. Now again, these are events, okay? So we don't have names for the activities in this numerical. We have names for the events. So after B event or B node, we have D. So this is D. So we are done with A, B, C and D. For E, we require C. So E is done. For F, we require C and E together. So since this is an event, for F, that is F is another node, right? So what it is saying is, there has to be a connection between C and E coming to F. So that is what this event is saying. Now this is not an activity as I mentioned. So we just have to connect C to F and E to F. Okay. Basically what this C comma E is indicating is, there are two different activities which result into F. So the two activities come from, one is coming from C to F, one is coming from E to F. So I hope you're getting that these are events and not activities. So then we have G which is preceded by D. So this results in G. H is preceded by F. So after F event, there is some activity which results in H. For J, we require F and H. So there is an event J which requires H as well as F. Okay. So two activities which result in J event. That's what is given over here. And lastly for K, we require J. So after J, there is some activity which results in K. 
and this concludes our third question okay so this is the last type of network diagram or the last type of question in which network diagram can be asked in the form of events and predecessor events and i hope the three different numericals are very clear to you now and i think you can tackle any kind of network diagram questions for now so yeah that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video if you like this video please give it a thumbs up do share it with your friends let me know in the comments how this video was i will definitely respond to your comments and thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace